Hello statistics students, this is Jamie Amy and this video is our discussion on section 3.1, well starting chapter 3 first, describing, exploring, and comparing data, and now section 3.1, measures of center. Okay, before I go to the next slide, I want to go over some new notation. Okay, the first one is a symbol that we're going to use, it's called sigma and it denotes the sum of a set of all values. Looks like this here. The second one is the variable used to represent the individual data values. And it is a lowercase x. The next symbol represents the number of data values in a sample, lowercase n, whereas the next one represents the number of data values in a population, capital N. So whenever you see the letter N, think, okay, that's the, um, the number of data values. And now if it's uppercase, that's from the population. Lowercase, it's from a sample of the population. Okay, next one we read as X bar, and it denotes the mean of a set of sample values. It looks like this. And the last one is pronounced mu and it denotes the mean of all values in a population. And it looks like this. So X bar and mu, whenever you see one of those, you're gonna have to think, okay, those are both, those both represent the mean. If it's X bar, then it's the sample mean. And if it's mu, then it is the population mean. Okay. Measures of center, including mean, median, and mode, are all tools for analyzing data. So let's discuss the arithmetic mean. And that's, uh, you've probably heard of it as the average. Um, it's the average of a set of numeric values. So when you hear arithmetic mean, if you need to think average for a little bit, that's fine. But then start to transfer that into, okay, an average is the arithmetic mean contrary to like the geometric mean, there are different types of means. So. All right, our example is the Verizon data speed times in megabits per second. We have one, two, three, four, five data values there, and we are asked to find the mean. To find the mean, we can add up all five of our data values and divide by five. And that would be X bar, because that is the mean from our sample. And if you add all those up correctly and divide by five, you'll get 30.74 megabits per second. Next, we have the median. To find the middle value when the data is arranged in order of increasing or decreasing. So in this example, we have one, two, three, four, five, six data values, and we're asked to find the median. So we rearrange them in order from here we have increasing, and we would look for the one in the middle. Okay, well, it's like if I go from this end and this end, then this one and this one, then this one and this one, looks like the middle would be right here, <laughs> but there's no data value there. There's no middle data value. So what we do is we take the 73, or 0 0.73, and the 1.10, and we find their arithmetic average, or mean, and that gives us the median of the set of data, which is 0 0.915. Next, the mode. That's the value that occurs the most frequently. So uh, we are asked to find the mode here. So let's look at the data in part A. Any of those um, represented the most frequently? 110 is represented twice. So that's the mode, we get the most. Take a look at B now. In B, we have 27 represented three times. 55 is also represented three times. So this is a set of data that we consider bimodal. It has two modes, 27 and 55. And take a look at part C. Looks like everything is represented one time. So there's no data value that's represented more than the others. So it's okay to have no mode. 
All right, a range is the distance from the maximum and minimum values in the original data set. So, you can take the maximum and you subtract the minimum. Subtraction gives us the distance that we're looking for. And for mid-range, that would be the value midway between the max and min values in a data set. So to find the middle, we would add and divide by 2. Just like finding the um, average of the arithmetic mean. You add them up, divide by 2. Now it would be the mid-range. Okay, another type of mean is called the weighted mean. And you've probably seen this most frequently in um, grade point averages. So to find a weighted mean, by that same X bar, what you have to do is take the weight of each grade, multiply it by the number of um, units that that class is worth, and then add all those up. That's what the summation we did here. And then you're going to divide it by the, all the weights added up. Uh, let me show you through example. In her first semester of college, a student of the author took five courses. Her final grades came along with the number of credits for each course were. Uh, she got an A in a class that was worth three credits. So A is the X, if you will and W is the weight, three unit class. She got an A in a four unit class, so we're gonna have another X, uh, which X is gonna equal four, because every A is worth four points. And then W is going to be the four units. She got a B in a three credit class, so B is going to be the X, which would be three, and then the weight is three. Think of it as like a higher credit class weighs more on the GPA. So like this class, the statistics class is four units. So that would weigh more than let's say um, a psychology class that happens to be worth three units. So she got a C in a three unit class. So the credits is the weight on her GPA and the C is gonna be the X, which will be worth two points. And finally, she got an F in a one-unit class. That's the weight, that's the X, and X are worth zero. Okay, so let's compute her grade point average, or GPA, and we're going to round it two decimal places. Let me erase all that so we can see better here. All right, here we go. Our W's are the weights. So we have the 3, the 4, the 3, the 3, and the 1. Because those are the units she took. 3, 4, 3, 3, 1. Our X's are the point values assigned to our letter grades. So we had A, A, B, C, F. That's why we see 4, 4, 3, 2, 0. 4, 4, 3, 2, 0. Okay, so make sure you're clear between the W's and the X's. All right, now we're going to set up our numerator, and we're going to add together the product of every W and X in its corresponding X. Oh, wow, so it looks like this. The first one is 3, corresponding with the number 4. So that's why you see 3 times 4 right there. Now the plus sign comes from that capital sigma. Capital sigma means add it all up. And then our next ones are a 4 and a 4, so that's why you see the 4 and the 4. Plus, plus sigma, capital sigma. Here we have a 3 and a 3. So it goes there. Plus from the sigma. Next we have a 3 and a 2. You can see those here plus because of capital sigma, it says the summation. And the last one is a one and a zero. So you can see those here. Okay, so order of operations, it'll do all the multiplication first, um, and then all the addition. And then, when we have that numerator all set, we want to divide by the total weight. So 
So basically like how many units you took that semester, how many credits, and that would be all of these added up. So the three, four, three, three, one. Okay, pick up your calculator and type this in carefully. Go ahead and pause the video, type that in. Okay, welcome back. If you typed it in correctly, you got 3.07. Okay, sorry about that. That's <laughs> my dog barking out the window. <laughs> okay. The next thing we're going to do is use the frequency distribution below to compute the mean. Okay, so again, we're com computing a mean, so an x bar. And we have to do so, though, based off a frequency distribution. So it's a little different. Um, we have our classes here. You guys are hopefully used to this. We covered this in chapter two. These are all the classes. And it looks like it's in times per second. Now we have our frequency. So 11 data values spell in this time range. 24 data values spell in this time range. 10 data values spell in this time range. Three fell in here, and two data values fell in this time range there. Okay, so if that is all the information we have, we have a frequency distribution table that looks like this, and we're asked to compute the mean. Well, it's not as easy as just adding up all the data values and dividing by the total number because we don't have all the individual data values. We just know that 11 of them are in this range, and 24 of them are in this range. So what we're going to do is compute the class midpoint. So we're going to find the middle of the 74 and the 124, and the middle of the 125 and the 174. So I want you to pause the video and try that. So um, add up the 124 plus the 75, divide by 2, and write your answer right here for class midpoint. Then go to the next one. 174 plus 125 divide by 2. So that's how you find the class midpoint, and the result would go right there. Okay, pause the video and do those now, please. Welcome back. And if you got the class midpoint right, you came up with 99 199.5, 199.5, 199.5, and the last class has a midpoint of 299.5. Okay, so now that we have found the middle of all of those classes, we're going to multiply the frequency times that midpoint. So basically 11 times the 99.5, then 24 times 149.5. And write your result here each time, okay? 10 times the 199.5. Okay, so pause the video and do those. Welcome back. If you did those correctly, you got 1,094.5, 3,588.0, 1,995.0, and 599.0. Okay, what we do now is we add all of these numbers up. And if you add them all up correctly, you will get 8,025. Okay, so a lot of work done so far. Now, let's talk about our solution. We find our solution by taking our 8,025 and dividing that by our total number of data values, which was 50, and that gives us x bar being 160.5 seconds. Okay, so the result of x bar, which is the bar there, equals 160.5 seconds, 
It is an approximation because it was based on the use of class midpoints instead of all the individual, oh, it looks like these were service times of some sort. Uh, but nonetheless, you are given a frequency distribution table and you are asked to find the mean. You'll want to refer to this slide and practice going through this process. And that will finish our discussion on section 3.1, Measures of Center. I'm Jamie Amy, and I'll see you next time for our discussion on section 3.2.